It's the new 96 one now, the Russell Rush hold show. On, hold on, hold on. What? Why are you wearing a life vest, man? Oh, our next haunted tour investigation is around a bunch of water. So, you know, I can't swim. I'm just taking precautions over here, you know? Where's mine? You know, I can't swim either. No, you know, I got you, man. Hey. Wait, where are we going that there's a bunch of water? Believe it or not, SeaWorld reached out because they're experiencing paranormal activity throughout the entire park. Oh, well, good thing I have my vest. That's right. Safety first, man. That's what Wait, I I'm still stuck on the fact that neither of y'all know how to swim. Not me. No. Yep. Never had the time. Yeah. Never learned. Actually, I got kicked out of swim lessons when I was a kid. That explains so much. What, the? what was that? SeaWorld's known to be a pretty scary place each year during Hollow Scream at Halloween. One year, somebody got so freaked out, they actually called 911 from inside one of the haunted houses. But I had no idea this was going on all the time. I'm meeting up with Ray from the park to get a handle on what's going on. What's going on, Ray? Hey, Russell, how are you? Doing well, man. Welcome to SeaWorld. Thank you. Listen, love this place. Been many times for fun. Never did I dream that we'd be here doing an investigation. Well, we're so glad that you're here. Um, there are multiple stories at multiple places here at the park that people have seen and experienced things. So we're so glad that you're here to check it out. There's multiple stories. Multiple stories, multiple places. They're excited. They All are. Right, should, we, <laughs> should we get started? Let's go. All right. This is how you know it's serious. They brought out the dolphin welcome party. So Ray, what's some of the history that's tied to this place? So the park opened up in 1988. There was a couple of years of construction before that, uh, but all we know was a big plot of land here in San Antonio that was used to create the park. So no incidents here? Nothing that we're aware of. Uh, but this right here is Seaside Landing. It's one of our event centers here at the park, and this is one of our big hotspots for activity. Seaside Landing is one of the oldest structures at the park, which could explain why it's also one of the most haunted. So there's multiple reports of things happening here at Seaside Landing. We have some locker rooms back over here that we can't get to because they're in use right now, but there people have said that lights turn on and off. Just randomly throughout the day, the showers will go on and go off. It's very, very strange. Are they seeing anything? Or? They're not seeing anything over there, but right over this way, one thing that people have seen here at Seaside Landing is a man in a yellow trench coat. He looks like a fisherman. Doesn't really do anything to anybody. He just kind of appears and disappears. Is that something that somebody at SeaWorld would wear if they were working here? Like a no. wetsuit kind of a thing? No, or? we don't have anything like that here. So, so it's a bit weird for them to be able to see somebody dressed like that. Wow. It makes perfect sense why they'd be seeing somebody in a wetsuit. But the fact that no one here wears anything like that at all, kind of makes me wonder if we're not dealing with some sort of traveler. This is definitely gonna be a spot that we're gonna put up a camera at tonight for sure. Water is known to increase paranormal activity, and there's lots of it here. All right, Russell, now this is one of the places that kind of creeped me out here at Seaside Landing. So people the have bathrooms? said the bathrooms. <laughs> so this is the women's bathroom. Uh, are we um, loud in here? Sure, okay. come on in. All right. Hey, you gotta ask these days. So the one thing that you'll notice is that there are no locks on the doors. There's no place for a lock or anything. Okay. So we've had employees that come in to use the bathroom and when they're finished and trying to leave, the door is actually locked on them. They can't open it, they can't move it, nothing. Hang on, you're, you're, there's no latch of any kind. I mean, look at this, there's nothing here that it would even stick to. No, and the creepier thing about it is that they always hear a little girl laughing. <laughs> Why would there be a little girl in here? No clue, Russell. I get that a lot of kids come to SeaWorld and this is the women's restroom, but a little girl ghost? This is bizarre. Is this the only spot where things are happening? No, it's happening all over the park. So welcome to Nautilus Amphitheater. Uh, this is a stadium here in the park where we put a lot of our live productions here. So for Hollow Scream, we'll be doing Monster Stomp on this stage. Nice. This is Andrew. Andrew, this is Russell. Hey man, how are you? Hey Russell. So Ray tells me that you may have had a paranormal experience. We've had a lot of a variety of things happen here at Nautilus Stadium. We've had 
door slamming, we've had heavy footsteps, objects moving all by themselves. So just a lot of variety and just things that make people a little uneasy that we can't explain. So you feel kind of creeped out in here? Occasionally, yeah. <laughs> all right, well, can you take me to where this has been happening? Absolutely. As Andrew leads us up to the second floor, he explains the activity's been so intense, it's caused several employees to flee the building. Okay, so this is the second floor of Nautilus, and this is where we've heard door slamming, footsteps, etc. I'm s what, what are you doing? That's the door that slams. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just a little creeped out. There's another exit on the side, right? Correct, okay. correct. Right. So this is where we hear this door slamming, opening and closing by itself. That's a heavy door. Oh yeah, but you can hear it throughout this upper level and when it closes and slams from the lower level. Look, a door slamming doesn't scream paranormal. And footsteps, they're often mistaken too. There's gotta be an explanation for what people are hearing. Right now, what I'm noticing is, it's kind of is almost like in a triangle shape, you know what I mean? Like you can't see the other side of the walkway. Yeah. Is there, isn't that, couldn't there be a chance that there's just somebody on the other side that's, that's walking? Yes, so the time that I personally experienced, um, I was in my office, which was on the other side of the building. I heard the door open and close. I hear heavy footsteps that I thought were going all the way down this hallway. I didn't hear the door open or close on the other side and no more footsteps, which kind of weirded me out. So I actually came over here, the lights were off in this whole hallway. And did you just hear that? The lights were off in this whole hallway. I swear I just heard, I literally just heard something over here. Is there anybody working here now? Uh, not on this level, no. Right on cue, there's footsteps coming down this hallway. That was weird. And you can see what I mean, that how from this point you can see both hallways, but if you're on one of the sides, you can maybe not see somebody who may be over here, but there's... Absolutely. There's nobody here. I just experienced the exact phenomenon people are experiencing up here. And I gotta be honest, this hallway's pretty eerie. So is that all that's going on in the theater? No, there's actually more going on. We should go downstairs. Let's go. Okay, so we're at one of the dressing rooms here at Nautilus Stadium. Okay. You can tell by all the costumes. Yeah, I was gonna say, I'm gonna <laughs> go shop in here in a minute. Okay, so we had one of the more abnormal instances occur here. Our costume supervisor, she was here working really late one night. Her entire staff had already left. Everything's in a perfect order, in a perfect row. She goes back to her office to look at her notes. She comes back and all of the racks are diagonal. Something moved the racks? Yes. She really didn't think anything of it. She put everything back in the same order, went back to her office to continue working. About 10 minutes later, she comes back and all of these racks were in a perfect circle. What the hell? What does it mean that they're in a circle? Now I'm really creeped out. Don't know. She got so uncomfortable, she decided that she was done for the night. She was just gonna go home. She came back the next day, everything was back in their original placement. Whatever it was, put everything back. Correct. These racks are heavy, they squeak, they make noise. Listen, I don't wanna meet the ghost that could move these things that easily. This could really be something severe. Can we try that? Sure. Like, I just wanna see like how long it takes us to put these in a circle because that doesn't seem realistic. Let's do it. Let's do it. If this was an epic prank, all right. As Andrew, Ray, and I are trying to move these racks around, we're realizing how difficult this actually is. I mean, you have to grab them from the right end or they don't move, clothes are falling off. It looks like a frickin' Laurel and Hardy routine. There. Well, that was a lot harder than it should have been. Yeah. Also, this is my nightmare surrounded in a circle of clothes. <laughs> like <laughs> Halloween costumes? Yeah. So weird. What's really weird, Russell, we gotta show you something over at the penguin encounter. Ray leads the way to the penguin encounter where he says he's been saving the most shocking reveal of the night. Hello. Hi, Ray. Hey. Hi. <laughs> Russell, Russell, this is Jenna. Hi, Stewart. Russell. How are you? Good to meet you. Nice to meet you too. You. Come on in. <laughs> I understand that you've uh, maybe had some paranormal experiences 
in this building? Before, we've heard a couple of times of, of different screams uh, coming from the building. There's obviously animals in here. We're not talking animal screams. Like. Oh, no. <laughs> the penguins are much louder. Um, and actually, this building is pretty much soundproof because the birds are so loud. The fact that they're hearing screaming with their own ears is not a good sign. So what else is going on? Just the screaming? I actually came in one night uh, after hours to check on things, make sure it was ready to go for the next day. For the health of the birds, we actually uh, stand here on this mat um, and that sanitizes our shoes. So after hours, this floor is completely dry. I'm always looking at the floor when I come in. So I came in uh, right through here, stepped on the floor um, and you know, it's dry and you can see where my wet footprints are. Um, went in, did what I needed to do. And then when I came back, I happened to notice that there were actually wet footprints. So there were footprints the yeah. next to yours? Next to mine. Down the hallway, you could see a few pairs of them, but you could see them just trailing down the building. With the pictures that she took, uh, we actually brought those pictures over here with the drain to kind of compare. Because of how small the drain is, we realized that the footprints were probably that of a child. Jenna shares the photo of what she saw that night with us. You can clearly see what looks to be bare, wet footprints. And compared to the size of the tile, it's clearly that of a child. You know, if I was skeptical before, Ray, I mean, you've shown me multiple people that have multiple experiences. Like, there's something going on here. Any ideas of what it could be, Russ? I mean, this isn't a tragic place, you know, but this is a place of happy memories. I almost wonder if someone came back because maybe this was their happy place. Uh, it's going to be hard to say, though, until we get in here, get the team all ready and get everything set up. Got a lot of ground to cover, but um, we'll get at it and let you know what we find. Sounds great. It's time to brief the team. All right, guys, welcome to SeaWorld. I promise we're not breaking and entering. There's actually things going on here. They invited us out because there's been so much activity all across the park. And you know, it's the places that you least expect, right? I mean, we're talking footsteps, voices. They've heard a little girl giggling. They've seen a man dressed in rain gear at Seaside Landing. They've heard people screaming, wet footprints in the penguin exhibit, and it's happening at multiple places all over the park. What was this beforehand, Kendra? Do we know, know anything about the history here? It was just farmland, ranch land, people went hunting, nothing really before it was built. So Daryl, I know we're dealing with a huge distance here, but they've actually seen things tonight. Is there any possibility we're gonna be able to catch the stuff on camera if it happens? There's a mile distance between buildings. You owe me. We are covered. Look, this is a huge space. Communication is going to be limited. Just be careful, all right? The entire team works with Daryl's direction to accomplish the massive project of wiring the cameras. The result? Eight cameras spread across three buildings a mile apart. This is the most challenging setup we've ever had. Distance is a real issue, and we're having to use a video repeater. I don't know. If it all works, it's going to be a miracle. Magically, one by one, all of the eight cameras come online. Booyah! Jack at command gets set for investigation. Tonight, the team will be trying something brand new, a simultaneous ITC session. ITC stands for Instrumental Transcommunication. It's a device that sweeps through radio frequencies and spirits can use their own voice to talk through the white noise. Each team has a different ITC device. Daryl and Kendra have the portal, Russell and Joey have the Andres box, and Vanessa and I have the Shack Hack. The idea is just to kind of see if we can bounce the spirit from device to device and determine if it's multiple spirits here like they think, or just one who can travel. All teams in all places. Team one is ready. Team two is ready. Team three is ready. We are go for SeaWorld. Start simultaneous ITC in three, two, one. Hello, is there anybody in here with us? My name is Kendra. All right, I have to talk quietly because I don't want Vanessa to hear my questions. I have to be really careful because I want her to interpret what she hears and not be influenced by my questions. Can you please come in here and talk to us? No. Can you say hey? Right there, hey. And we have contact. Why would you be here in this building?
We're outside. We're, we're outside? That's what it said. Are you the man that stands outside? Earlier tonight, we were told about the man in rain gear that hangs out in this area. Could this be him? Right. To the right side? Which is the right side? I guess over here. Isn't that where they see him, Daryl? Yep. Well, let's Something. go look over here. Can you talk to us here, please? Can you say Russell? Did they just say my name? Everywhere we go, people seem to know my name. I don't think that's a good thing. What do you think of the people who work here? Are you trying to scare them on purpose? Or would you just like to get their attention so that they'll listen Sounds to like you? Sounds like people trying to talk over each other. Oh, sh Wow. OK, then. This is not at all what we expected. You'll get your turn. Line up and go one at a time. What the f Do it. Did you see that? That motion light went off, and it's pointed backwards. So there's someone out there in the wardrobe. This could explain how the racks moved into all those crazy patterns. Maybe it's not one spirit, but an entire group. Are you in here with us? Would you like to come forward and talk to us? Oh my gosh, I'm tingling all over. The dynamic in here just changed dramatically. We're gonna shut down over here. If we're hearing screams again, we're gonna check into this over here. Let us know if you want us to turn it back on. Roger that. I don't know exactly what's going on here, but earlier tonight before cameras were rolling, we heard what sounded like somebody screaming right in the very same area where they captured the picture of those creepy footprints. This might be the hotspot for activity because we just heard it again. Matt, you coming in? Did you hear that? The minute we opened the door, Something starts screaming at us again. That's got to be a bird, right? Are you okay? Hold on. Does it sound like I said yes? Or am I tripping? Please tell me I'm tripping right now. But it came from down there. And it, it wouldn't be the birds, no? Have you heard a bird yet? No. Okay, check out there. See if there's anything out here. I've seen way too many horror movies to know. You're not supposed to open the door. There it is again. Okay. Now, now it's down there. It feels like somebody's playing games with us. Are you down this way now? This is the entrance to the exhibit. I just want to test this out. There has to be a logical explanation for this. I mean, we're in the penguin exhibit. Makes sense that it's the penguins, right? The team from SeaWorld agrees to open the enclosure to compare the sounds the team is hearing with that of the penguins inside. There's a whole other door. I am fully prepared for something to jump out at me right now. And the moment of truth? That's good. See? That sounds freaky. That's really loud. I told you, you, as soon as you get near them, you can hear how loud they are. OK, so maybe it's not the birds. That's definitely not what we heard. Yeah, I don't, I'm confused. I don't know. Well, we'll see what the other teams say, but did you hear that? Yeah, what was that? Something just made a huge thump on the back door. The team investigates the source of the noise to find nothing. All right, teams, it's about time to wrap up this session. As the teams head back to command to compare the results of the ITC experiment, Daryl and Kendra encounter one last surprise. 
As we're walking out of Seaside past the women's restroom, we hear what sounds like a little girl. In the area where they've seen and heard a little girl. Can you do that again? All I'm thinking about is a story about people getting locked in the bathroom. That is not happening to me. Oh, those light panels are in there too. Flashlight just went on. Well, hi there. I literally just set the flashlight down to check things out, but apparently somebody wants to talk. Can I talk to the spirit of the little girl that runs around here? We think we heard you giggling earlier. Did we scare you away when we opened the door? What was that? That wasn't you? No, that was not me. I thought that was you. Does this door open? What? No. Did you hear that, Gonza? Yes, it was right here. Now there's someone in the closet behind our cameraman. Hello? Oh, it's locked. Was that the door that did that? Yeah, I yeah. thought it was Gonzo, no, but... No, it was not me. It's like it's messing with us, you know what I mean? After a short break, the teams get set in their new locations, except Jell and Vanessa, who have asked to return to the theater. I just really feel in tune with whatever's going on in the theater, and I feel like because of that, we have a good shot of getting to the bottom of this. We're on the second floor of the Nautilus Theater. This is the area where multiple people have heard footsteps and other noises that freaked them out so bad they ran. Jell is going to listen to the scanner and I'm going to ask questions and uh, see if she gets anything. Hi. Hello. Demon. Are you a demon? Hi. Demon. Jesus Christ. A demon? That's the last thing I need. Are you the person that walks up and down these hallways? Okay. Oh, I heard a noise. Tell us where to go. You. Me what? Sit. You want me to sit? You. Okay, I'm gonna sit down. Fell. Fell. You fell f hot from somewhere high? Fell. Where'd you fall from? How? You got to tell me how you how? fell. Sorry. It's okay. Pain. This is getting really serious, really fast. If you want us to leave, turn on these lights. Oh, <laughs> Joe, he wants us to leave. I said, do you want Pain. us to leave? Turn on these lights. You gotta go. I wanna get out of here. I'm done. I've been working with Vanessa long enough to know that if she says it's time to go, we should probably go, even if I don't want to. I'm telling you, there's something going on in this theater. Feeling quite comfortable in their current position at Seaside Landing, Team One grows increasingly frustrated by the lack of action. God. It has been so freaking dead for us tonight. It's like we got to do something to like amp it up, man. Like we got we got we got to take it to the next level. Maybe we like I don't know because like, it seems to react a lot to females. Maybe we should probably get with like Jill and Vanessa. Nah. No. I got an idea. Oh Lord, this is never good. What's your idea? I'll be back. Oh, this is gonna be so good. Why did I not think of this sooner? I don't know, I don't know what Russell has up his sleeve. And I just got left alone. I don't know if I like that. Sometimes I wonder if Russell's even seen a horror movie. Cause the rule is, you never split up. What are you wearing? What in the world? What is that? You're... Just a little something out of my car. You just carry that around? All right, where's my boy at? This fool. Where's Pennywise when you need him? Hey, Georgie. 
You look good, man. Right? Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, yeah. Why not dress up like the guy they've seen here? Who knows? Could trigger something. Where, where's the other guy wearing this gear at? I don't know where I'm supposed to go. Are we late? Like... Can you tap the wall? That was good, that was good, we heard that. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. They must have got the guy talking. How close are we to the sea roll sign? The one that we took a picture by. Oh, Whoa. Did you hear that? Yeah. Great job, good job. Why in the hell did I just walk closer to it? Are you the man in the, in the yellow raincoat that they see in here? Tap it loud one time if it was you. That was loud. We may have just found the man everybody's talking about. All right, teams, that's a wrap on SeaWorld. Come on back home. Okay. Well, thank you for communicating with us. That was cool. Well, it took to the bitter end, but we finally got some action. It's getting late, though. It's time to pack things up, review evidence, and see what we got. It's the new 96 one now. Welcome to the Russell Rush Show. And look, our buddy Ray's here from SeaWorld. Welcome, Ray. Hey, How man. are you? Thanks What's for having me. On, Appreciate Ray? it. Listen, man, we, we are here to tell you what we found during our investigation at SeaWorld. Now, I got to ask, did anything happen after we left? Have there been any more experiences you've heard from people? No, nothing. Actually, after you guys came out, it all kind of just was quiet for a bit. Nobody was experiencing anything uh, until I would say maybe a couple weeks ago or so. It just kicked back up all just of a sudden. Just kicked back wow. up, yep. Well, listen, I can confirm that what you told us is legit. SeaWorld has paranormal activity in all three of the locations that we investigated. The penguin encounter. Joey and I experienced that scream that was not the birds. Yeah, it wasn't a bird. There's the weird bear footprints. Yes. That's bizarre. And then Jell and Vanessa were in there investigating and picked up this on their audio recorder. Water? Did you say water? Water? Did you say water? I mean, obviously there's an exhibit there with water. With it sounds water. like somebody's water. That's what, that's kind of what I hear. Yeah, like someone's thirsty, like they're kind of parched. Right. I, and I and it know. sounds like a woman to us. Yeah, I, I don't I don't know. <laughs> so that's bizarre. The next spot that we investigated was the Nautilus Theater, where you have shows happening all the time. There is something there. And whoever it is, whatever it is, is not shy. Just check this out. Hello, is there anybody in here? Oh, wow. Oh, hi there. <laughs> that was fast. I mean, almost instantaneous. That was like right away. They asked Are and you they here? got a response. Bing. Hello, is there anybody in here? The last place was Seaside Landing, one of the older structures Correct. at SeaWorld. Correct. I don't know if you're ready to hear what we found at Seaside Landing. There's the big story about the little girl, right? Right. She's there. She's real. And we heard her. What is that? She just pops up and says, hi. Yeah, that kind of gave me chills because you could, <laughs> you could clearly hear her. Listen to this. So clear. Plain as yeah. day. She's right there. And later on in the night, Daryl and Kendra were using the, the portal. And yet again, she appeared and, and talked with them and confirmed everything. Hi there. How are you? It's a little girl. To me, it sounds like she says, like, I, I'm good. Like, <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, wow. That, that's mind blowing. SeaWorld's haunted, y'all. <laughs> <I>, yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm kind of speechless. How do you feel uh, going back to work now? Um, luckily, I don't work in those areas, so I'm good. <laughs> uh, I'll He's be like, okay. <laughs> I'm fine. Don't show it to the people that work there. That's awesome. Well, listen, thank you so much for letting us come out. That was quite the night. Yeah, thanks so much for coming out. Th this was awesome. I got a call from Russell to get the team together for an emergency meeting. 
I have no idea what's going on. This feels really weird. It's not like Russell to do this. Unfortunately, I'm not able to be there because of family issues, but I told Vanessa to call me right after the meeting. Hey guys, uh, thanks for being here today. I know it was a fire drill last minute. I know not everybody could be here, but um, just have some news to share. This doesn't get any easier. Um, so a while back, I was diagnosed with a rare form of cancer. Uh, it's called T-cell lymphoma, and there's no cure, just uh, treatment and a hope for remission. So on Monday, I, uh, I start radiation. So I'm gonna stay positive and fight. Um, I know y'all got my back, but Gonna need your help to uh, finish the rest of the season and and uh, keep going with what we're doing. I may be a bit of a hard ass, but this one got me. Imagining Hunter without Russell's not something I now. Nah, um. As a nurse, I've heard one too many of these kinds of conversations. It never gets any easier. I've known Russell for over a decade. He brought me into this, and I just can't imagine it without him. It was, it was a rough meeting. That was kind of one of the last things I was expecting to hear, but Russell's tough. Like, he's going to get through it, and that's what he does. It's just another obstacle that he's going to get over. I give him all my love and my prayer, you know, my prayers and my family, everyone, the whole Haunted Tour team is behind him. Today, I am heading to my first radiation treatment. We just never even dreamed that we we're gonna be in these situations, you know? Nobody wishes for this. But I'm also a strong believer in the fact that you're only given the burdens that you can handle, so. So be it, I guess, huh? Somebody asked me if I was scared. You know, what's funny is, of all the things I've ever done, all the situations I've been in on this show, this is by far the scariest moment of my life. I have no idea what this means, or I have no idea what the future holds. I just have a list of things that I know that I want to still do, so... Anyway, wish me luck. See you on the other side.